Time for a midnight snack here in Twisted Metal Small Brawl. I said midnight, so obviously this is October relevant. Ooh, creepy. And Crimson Fury will be our contestant. Highest top speed in the game. Driven by, of course, Agent Stone. Thinks he is a British special agent and needs to stop Billy Calypso. Because that's what special agents do. They stop bullies. This is the triumphant return of Crimson Fury. Introduced in the first Twisted Metal and immediately dumped in the second game. And it gets to investigate Big Richard's plumbing. Get it? Big dicks. This game's sense of humor remains wildly inappropriate. But uh, this is the easy death oven. A real stretch of a pun. I do appreciate that they're referencing an ancient toy that was of dubious relevance even in 2001. But they could have called it Easy Break Oven. B-R-E-A-K. That would have been closer and more of a pun. Ah well. We are also going to see a lot of environmental hazards in this level. And the titular oven is by far the least interesting of all of them. Unless they mean the microwave oven. Which is indeed pretty cool. It killed Warthog pretty much outright. You can cook any car you want simply by attacking the door while an enemy is within the oven itself. And they want to get in there because there's a health refill. Very few are available in this level. So, it's good bait. Matter of fact, I could use a health refill right about now. And the astute viewer may notice that the minimap indicates there is a plus sign in the middle of the ground floor. So I need to do some activities to get underneath that table there. The kitchen counter must be destroyed. And there happens to be a giant ass pointed right at it. So we'll do the only logical thing Harness the power of lit farts so as to detonate the kitchen counter. That is one of those destructibles that is on par with destroying the entire world in Rogue Trip. And the reward is great too. We unlocked Dark Side. One of the best vehicles in the entire series. Another returning favorite, much like Crimson Fury. Because Darkseid was also introduced in the first game and then dropped for a very long time. At least as far as a playable vehicle goes. So this game does have good taste in what it allows you to play as. I'll give it that much. I also said in a previous video that a vehicle cannot appear as an enemy until it has been unlocked. But during practice, I did have Darkseid appear on this save file before I had unlocked it. So apparently that is not the case. I assume Axel could also have appeared as an enemy in the very first level before we unlocked it. However. There is one third and final unlockable vehicle, and I'm 90% confident that it will not show up until after we have officially unlocked it. But I can't prove it. You can't prove a negative. But that was the level's big, memorable destructible that we'll all take with us for the rest of our days. Let's explore the now lackluster environmental things that we're going to find throughout the rest of the level. Like on the other half of the countertop that we haven't explored yet. We get the environmental pickup. There's a mouse trap there. We'll see what that does later. And the oven. I don't know what that thing on the wall is. But uh, the oven is just uh, damage platforms. You touch them and they set you on fire unless they are not burning red at the moment. And this cookie jar over here is a generic destructible full of cookie sprites and little reddish sprites. And we didn't get a good look at them, but they are cockroaches, as you could probably guess. This level is gross. There goes the toaster. 
blow up the salt and pepper shakers, and, of course, the cake can be destroyed as well. Very nice chunks that it bursts into. Well represented. And the environmental attack. The ice cube dispenser fires ice cubes out of the fridge. It's maybe the worst environmental attack in the entire franchise. It's only basically going to hit you if you happen to be on that center counter. Any enemy basically immune to it. Totally useless. And over here in the sink, it's very easy to spin the camera around in such a way that you can see that the back of these are not textured and are therefore totally transparent. The faucet is uh, not the best place to explore. The mouse traps, we saw they are bounce pads, both of them leading to the central countertop. There they go again. It's almost like they're saying, if you're over on that half of the counters, maybe go to a more interesting part of the level. Get out of there as fast as you possibly can. The blender is indestructible on the base. However, the cup can be destroyed. And I didn't think to shoot it. It can also be seen through from behind. That was kind of unfortunate. The microwave is not like on a timer or anything. Closing the door is activated by damage. You do any damage to the door, it closes on you. But it has a very, very strange hitbox because it is laying flat across the counter. Anyway, finally time to show off our special. It is Paper Airplanes. Totally in keeping with the theme of Crimson Fury. Because Crimson Fury has no theme. I'm almost certain that's why it was cut from most of the games. It's a vehicle with no real flavor or character to it. Spectre is basically filling the same role of being a sports car, but it's also ghost-themed. It has a special that shoots through walls and stuff. So Crimson Fury, boring car, nothing special about it. So they just gave it the paper airplane attack that is a good idea in this game about kid weapon stuff. At the end of the day, though, it is, rather tellingly, just a reskin of Spectre's special. Except that it doesn't go through walls, but it does set enemies on fire to make up for that absence. And you did see that I could get myself caught in the can opener. It's actually hard to avoid, so you should probably just not go near the can opener, because the enemies do avoid it pretty well. I have gotten them stuck in there before, but couldn't get it on video. I wanted Thumper to die in there. Ah well. Bender would have traumatic flashbacks. And that is about it for this level. We got one enemy left. We've seen all there is to see. Let's talk about the music, which is rather distracting throughout this entire playthrough. It is a rather familiar track, a remix of Cyberb Slide from Twisted Metal 1. And you rarely get to hear this much of it, because Twisted Metal 1 has dynamic music and often switches to the ambient track right as this track gets going. You did have the camera get stuck in a wall there, that happens a lot. But only when you have the countertop open after the lit fart. When it's closed, it does count as a solid wall and the camera won't go through it. But there we go. Last enemy, get our ending. Welcome, Agent Stone. <laughs> and you think I'm afraid of a, a, a silly water pistol? No. But she is. <laughs> Dude, get off me! Whoa, whoa. <laughs> nice kitty. Nice kitty. Uh, mommy? It's not all Twisted Metal 3 style endings where the driver gets screwed over in the end. Sometimes they get the better of Calypso. That's one of my favorite endings in the entire series. Very, very well done. And we unlock Darkseid. Let's show off a little highlight reel of Darkseid beating Endurance Mode up to a certain threshold. And get a little info about Jimmy Ash, the driver of Darkseid, about whom nothing is known. Anyway. 
This level is very ill-suited to endurance mode because very few health refills. So you want to abuse environmental stuff like the microwave. But my bomb went off prematurely. How am I going to get this guy crammed in there for that safe kill? Okay, what happened there? The door sliced my vehicle in half, earning me a pathetic ranking on this attempt at endurance mode, but we can just hop right back in and cut way ahead too after I was already quite successful, but this is how it's supposed to look. You put the bomb on the door, is guaranteed to activate the door and the bomb itself does quite a bit of damage. Good way to get a head start on any kill you need. We need 20 in order to unlock the next bonus level. For the record, you can do this endurance mode grinding on any level you choose. And like I said, the first level is probably the best one you could possibly choose. But I did want to show off what it was like to play endurance mode on a normal level. With a normal number of pickups and uh, environmental stuff. Basically, any level you choose besides the first one is going to play out mostly like this one. A big variable, however, is what enemies you are dealt throughout Endurance Mode. It chooses a pool of five enemies and loops through them in the same order over and over and over again. Infinitely, of course. Until you get sick of playing and reach your goal. Or, of course, if you die. Which is why Darkseid is a particularly good choice here. Darkseid is very, very hard to kill. Tremendously high HP. And we were dealt mostly low armor opponents. I saw Twister, Spectre was on the list. We got very lucky with this endurance mode. Darkseid Special, of course, is the one that would also be used in black. It is a ram attack. However, while it is active, and it is active for a very long time, you can still control yourself rather well. You cannot decelerate, but you can hold the sharp turn button and turn on a dime. And you are completely invincible the entire time. So that's Buster's Lanes unlocked. A bowling alley. And that's where we'll be going next time. For now though, we need to accomplish the rather arduous task of showing off Darkseid's damaged look. It's actually kind of difficult to get this vehicle hurt so much that it starts to physically break down. So we're going to have to allow the enemy to beat on us for a while, and I accidentally fired off my shield, making it take a little longer. But there we go, our battery compartment is broken open. So our green and blue batteries, and in our final stage, our bumper falls off, the top of the cab collapses. Not much left of Darkseid. I'll try and blow myself up. Which either has no effect or very little effect. I saw my health budge the tiniest bit, so I guess it did a little, but not much. The microwave, appropriately, finishes us off. Had to watch. Dark side die. Although from now on, we're going to see that happen plenty, I bet. It is by sheer coincidence that we haven't had to kill Dark Side yet, but it will certainly happen in the future. Our performance got us upgraded from pathetic to amateur. I'll call that a win. And we got to reacquaint ourselves with some of our old favorites, Dark Side and Crimson Fury. Next time, we'll be taking a look at that bonus bowling level that we worked so hard to get.